συναδελφών του, του, Αγγλικού, του Βρετανικού καναλιού, ο οποίο ε, έλαβε τι διαρροέ, έλαβε τα έγγραφα, τα περίφημα πια του Μοσκοβισή, του, τα έγγραφα που πίστευε ο κ. Βαρουφάκη ότι θα του παρουσιάσει στο Eurogroup. Και για πρώτη φορά μα λέει στον αέρα ακριβώ το παρασκήνιο τι ακριβώ συνέβη χθε στο Eurogroup και ε, ποια είναι η κατάσταση αυτή τη στιγμή για την Ελλάδα και την ελληνική κυβέρνηση. Κύριε Μέισον, θα μπορούσατε να μα περιγράψετε χρονολογικά τι έγινε με τι διαρροέ και τα έγγραφα. So on Monday afternoon, the Eurogroup Finance Ministers meeting broke up, and we got this text, which I have here on the on the iPad, which was quite rapidly leaked to the media, uh, where Mr. Varoufakis has put his uh, a line through the writing, which says the Greek authorities indicate they intend to successfully conclude the program, taking into account the new government's plans. That's what they didn't like. Varoufakis comes out of the meeting, and then. He gives a press conference where he says, look, we had a much better draft that I was prepared to sign, which I had discussed with Pierre Moscovici, the European commissioner. Okay, so that is mid-evening uh, in Brussels on Monday. And the journalists were all saying, okay, well, where is this? Some journalists were briefed, presumably by the European commission, that this draft did not exist. Late on Monday night, I was leaked Uh, in fact, two versions of uh, this document that came out of the process with Mr. Moscovici. And after about 20 minutes of trying to ascertain their veracity, whether they were genuine, I came up with the latest one, which is entitled here, Draft 15th of February, Close of Business. There it is on my iPad. I'm afraid you, it, it's flashing into your screen, but there it is. Many of your re, your viewers will have already seen this, um, and that was a very different document because in it there is this uh, critical phase phrase that the the Greek program will be an extension of the current loan agreement, a four month intermediate program as a transitional stage to a new contract for growth for Greece. That will be decided during this period. So that, of course, has some of the things that Varoufakis wants. It has the transitional phase. It has an extension of the current loan, but not of the current conditions. As you know, the Greek government wants to to implement 30% of its own program, leaving 70% of the old memorandum program in place for this four-month period. So it was a big change. And of course, what did it prove? It proved that the document existed. Uh, it proved that the sides are actually quite close together. Of course, there are no signatures on these documents, so I can't prove whether it was a done deal. Τώρα, στο tweet που ανεβάσατε χθε το βράδυ, είπατε ότι ο κύριο Βαρουφάκη ισχυρίζεται ότι αυτό το έγγραφο είναι του κύριου Μοσκοβισή. Γιατί είπατε ισχυρίζεται, The journalist's job is to listen to claims and hear counterclaims. And the problem that we have, those covering the Brussels negotiations, is that it's a new kind of, it's a new circumstance. Because the old way of working, which is that you may get a little verbal briefing from somebody who is the spokesman of somebody else, maybe at midnight, to one or two chosen journalists. That's the old way. The new way is that the Greeks have gone in there and without re revealing my sources, it is clear that some leaks are coming of documents and of the process. Now, we have asymmetry. In other words, we have a, an information flow to us from the Greek side. We have no information flow to us, or not the same level of information, from the official side. And therefore, it, we, you have to simply present claims And then we wait to hear from Mr. Moscovici what his version of events is. The journalist's job is to put those claims into the open. And importantly, last night, why I, I, I mean, this was way past my deadline for my program I work on, why I was up beyond midnight trying to get to the bottom of this is, of course, the substantive claim from the European Commission was that these documents did not exist. They quite clearly exist. Τώρα, σαν δημοσιογράφος είναι κατανοητό ότι δεν θέλετε να μας αποκαλύψετε ποιος σας έδωσε αυτά τα έγγραφα. Όμως έχετε ήδη γράψει ότι οι διαρροές αυτές ευνοούν τελικά την ελληνική πλευρά. Οπότε ποιο είναι το συμπέρασμα που μπορεί να βγάλει κανείς, ότι οι Έλληνες σας δώσανε τα έγγραφα. Well, you can draw any conclusion you want 
Uh, but this, I, obviously I wouldn't reveal the sources. Not all of them are from the same source either. Um, the, of course, in journalism, we have to ask in the Latin phrase, cui bono, who benefits? And of course, the Greeks benefit from this. But let me tell you, when you have the serious media of the Western world saying effectively to Varoufakis, you're, you're making this up. It's a fantasy. It doesn't exist. To prove it exists is quite a big thing. And of course, this is why when I tweeted last night the proof that it existed, um, the Greek media were very interested in it. Τι νομίζετε ότι θα γίνει τελικά από εδώ και πέρα. I covered the 2011 and the 2012 memorandums and the election. When you had a Greek government that effectively was accepting what the Europeans were saying, the negotiations weren't so tough. These are some of the toughest negotiations I've ever seen. Uh, and I have, I have no doubt that they will go right down to the wire in terms of people fighting an information battle, which is what they do. We journalists just have to try and make sense of it. The last Wednesday at the, at the European summit and before, we were hearing from the Greek side that there is a pattern that goes like this. Somebody conciliatory comes to the Greeks with a form of words that they want. And the essence is always the same four-month extension, amendment to the old program, some leeway on what we call uh, the, the primary surplus, the amount that the Greek economy is in the black. There is always that in the draft. They go, okay, let's talk about it. They, a meeting takes place, somebody else comes into the room with a harder draft. And we know the source of this harder draft is nearly always the German finance ministry. Sometimes it's also the Spanish government, which is pushing very hard for Greece to be defeated here. Um, this is a pattern, and I've observed it in these talks for nearly a week now. And you know what people are calling it on social media is switch and bait. I don't know whether it translates into Greek, but basically it's a negotiating tactic where you say, you know, you say, it's like you say to a dog, hey, here, here's a bone, and then here's something harder than a bone. It, it's, it's an old tactic. And the Greek government is dealing with it. Um, I worry that with the levels of fatigue and, let's put it this way, the, the fog of information that is being created by the way this is happening, my concern is that the, despite the fact that the two sides are in fact very close, you end up with the collapse of negotiations as happened last night. Friday is very close. And if we don't do a deal by, by Friday, I would really think that the, the mechanics of the Eurozone are going to be working against Greece, the, the technicalities. Um, we, we know from yesterday's draft that some of the money allocated to Greece is intended for recapitalizing the banks. Um, those banks need probably to be recapitalized. They certainly need to be uh, kept liquid, which means that they have money in them turning over by this emergency lending assistance scheme. Φοβάστε ένα φαινόμενο σαν της Κύπρου ή ένα περιορισμό των αναλήψεων ή ακόμα και ένα Brexit. I covered the Cyprus crisis uh, and it's quite clear that if emergency lending assistance were withdrawn from the Greek banks that they that one or more of them would have to close. Uh, we are not there yet and I think people should be reassured by the fact that we are not there yet despite two months now of deposits moving out of the banking system. Πώς επομένως πιστεύετε ότι μπορεί να βρεθεί μια λύση τελικά; There is a wing of Europe which is trying to do a deal with Syriza. That includes I think Juncker. It includes I think Moscovici. It includes the French government. There's another wing that wants to to force one of two things. And it's a big wing in Europe. They want either a total climb down, a total collapse of Syriza's program or Greek exit from the Euro. Many businesses, many investors, many journalists have staked their entire reputation on the, on the idea, which I think is a fantasy, that Tsipras will do a U-turn and give in and surrender. They just don't, they don't understand uh, the Greek reality, as many of your listeners and viewers will understand it. Uh, it, it is a bit of a, a foreign, uh, an alien experience to have such a left-wing government uh, in a state like Greece. It's like a small local football team playing Real Madrid. Yeah? The, the Greeks have almost no infrastructure 
to, to what they're trying to do in Brussels. Uh, the, the, the press team are new. They are new ministers. Uh, it, it, maybe it was always like that, but we never knew that because the Greek, the, the old Greek government didn't didn't fight back against what Brussels was trying to do. And in that situation, there's a lot of possibility for individual people to make mistakes. So I would be, you know, I would be concerned and, and I would want to see these negotiations go go on in kind of uh, calm, short periods rather than relentless long periods, because that is how you end up crashing. You can you could crash into the, the buffers, as we say. You, 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 could, you could really hit the hard limits, which I think is Friday. The pressure comes back to Brussels and Frankfurt, because these guys running Syriza, running the Greek government now, um, didn't come into politics to collapse. And this is what I keep saying to uh, other journalists who don't know uh, Tsipras, Varoufakis, Lafatanis, those people, Renaduro, they didn't come into politics to surrender. So what I I hope we don't end up in a Cypriot situation, but if we do, the pressure in the pressure in Cyprus was all on Cyprus. Here, the pressure will be on Greece and back to the rest of the European Union. That is their negotiating position, and the Greeks have an equally hard negotiating position, as explained to me. Uh, they call it the Samson strategy. We will fight to remain in the Eurozone, and we will be the last ones out of the door, but if we leave, we will slam the door so hard the building falls down. That That is, that is the negotiating position of the Greeks. Uh, it's not game theory, but it is a hard uh, position. This thing here, this the thing that came out on Sunday night and was supposed to be, from the Greek point of view, the basis of discussion, is not a formula for confrontation. It, you know, I would imagine there are people inside Syriza, people to the left of Syriza, people in the KKE, who will be quite annoyed by this, by the amount which Varoufakis has given away. In order, and let's be clear what he's what he's doing it for to gain breathing space. Uh, because these are ministers who need who want to come home to Athens. They want to be they want to be in Athens, experiencing this amazing atmosphere uh, of change. Uh, Brussels to them is an alien environment. What they need is the four months to try and do things that they promised the Greek people to do. That's what makes me hopeful that there won't be some kind of catastrophe. Merkel is the one from the people I've spoken to who are in the room last week at the European summit. Merkel is the one who is trying to do the deal. She is trying to get everybody together. And actually, I know a lot of Greeks are quite angry with Merkel. From the account I heard of what happened, they should be, if they wanted, if they like the series of position, those of your, your viewers who support your current government, then I think their biggest adversaries inside Europe right now is, is Rajoy, the Spanish prime minister. It's him who's pushing to smash Syriza for the obvious reason he's facing total defeat uh, within eight or nine months in his own election. Νομίζω ότι έθεσε πάρα πολλά θέματα ο κύριος Μέισον. Θα ήθελα να πάω πρώτα στον κύριο Βουλέα να μου πείτε εσείς τι πιστεύετε αν όντως ο χρόνος τελειώνει για την Ελλάδα και αν πιστεύετε ότι θα μπορέσει να βρεθεί μια λύση πάνω στο σχέδιο του το έγγραφο Μοσκοβή 